Hey, what's up, everybody? Fred Minnick here. This is my first video of 2023. I hope everyone had an awesome holiday season and a great new year. After my top 100, I basically took two weeks off. I mean, yeah, I checked emails. I checked social media. I did all that stuff. But I didn't do any meetings. I didn't do any tastings. I didn't plan for anything. I just enjoyed my kids. I took my oldest son uh, to go to a Green Bay Packers game. And that was magical. Uh, just, just an incredible, incredible time. Uh, so for my first video of the year, I actually want to jump into something that's kind of trending, um, you know, right now, and that is dry January. I'm actually even going to review this right here. This is the uh, Kentucky Spiritless uh, Spiced uh, Non-Alcoholic Cinnamon Whiskey. So there's this. There's this whole trend of making uh, non-alcoholic spirits. So I'm actually going to review that here. But I'll, first, I want to kind of go through uh, some of the things about, about dry January. I want to start with saying I, I never, ever want to interfere with someone's sobriety. And people ask me all the time, like, how much should I drink? You know, how do you... Um, uh, how much do you drink in a week? I, I think I think that's a very personal question. And if you are asking me uh, how much you should drink, I think you should take a look at like, you know, the guidelines of what moderation is. Uh, you should also talk to your doctor about that. But I am in no way, shape or form someone that can tell you um, how how much you should drink. I can tell you what I do. So I am a professional. I'm a professional taster. So my what I do is is going to be out of the ordinary, out of what other people do. First of all, YouTube is not all I do, right? So I've been doing this for um, this will be my 17th year as a as a spirits uh, writer, taster, personality, whatever you want to call me. And and so you have to, if you're going to be in this business, you have to taste a healthy amount. Now, that tasting is very, very different than drinking. Um, drinking is where, of course, you're drinking, right? Tasting, you're, you're taking in the flavor, uh, you're analyzing the aroma, you're looking at it from an analytical perspective. You know, much like I tried to show on my, my top 100 in the first round where I was, you know, kind of barreling through everything, tasting, spitting, everything, that's, that's essentially what tasting is. I, I am trying to get myself in a situation where I can just um, I can just do that, just taste and, you know, cut out like that extracurricular, you know, those dinners where there's one or two cocktails or a couple a couple flights, um, you know, trying to cut out that TV bourbon, which if you've ever listened to me in my bourbon pursuit segment uh, above the char, I talk about one of my greatest weaknesses when it comes to bourbon is my TV bourbon. And that is where I sit down and, uh, you know, I have a dram while I'm watching my favorite TV show or a sporting show, a sporting show, like a football game or something, watching my Cowboys. Hopefully by the time this is, this video is over, not all of them have went into the transfer portal. Uh, but that's a whole nother video. Trust me on that. That's a whole nother rant. And, uh, so I am, I, I am someone who is very cognizant of the amount of units that I put in my body. I have seen a lot of people get into this industry and uh, burn out. There have been people um, who have drank far too much, made bad decisions while they drank too much. Uh, there have been people who, you know, drank so much they, you know, affected their organs, hurt their you know, hurt their, you know, muscular structure, uh, hurt the gray matter in their brain, like, you know, alcohol should not be abused. And when people think of alcohol being abused, they tend to kind of like jump on this on the side of like, you're making a bad decision. And look, that's very much true. If you have too much and you make bad decisions, you probably need to step away from alcohol, you, you really should. And um, people, some people can drink and, and not have any like personality changes, don't make bad decisions. And for God's sake, please don't get behind the wheel. You know, if you're at a party, make sure you're making, you know, uh, plans in advance. And if you've had too much, there's Uber, there's Lyft, there's friends. Um, there's a lot of ways you can get through that. 
But so there's that element, you know, there's like the people stop drinking because they make bad decisions. The other aspect is, you know, there's a lot of people who drink a lot, but don't make asses of themselves. You know, they don't make bad decisions. And sometimes they are the life of the party. Sometimes they are an element of the party or something like that. And they don't, but they don't um, make an ass of themselves. Yet they still overindulge. And that can have an impact on your body. You know, you see, you see a lot of burnout in this industry because of those two reasons. People drink too much and they feel the physical effects of alcohol on their body. And the other thing is they make, sometimes people make poor decisions. And, and I want to say this, I am all for, for people keeping their sobriety. I'm all for, for people making good decisions when it comes to alcohol. I'm not, I'm not doing what I do because I want to see someone uh, passed out in a ditch in New Orleans. I'm not doing, that's not why I do what I do. I believe that if you learn to taste and if you learn to enjoy bourbon or wine or, you know, gin or tequila, you learn, you learn to taste and sip it and talk with one another about it. I believe that you can curb a lot of these issues, but unfortunately, you know, you go into a club, you know, they're, they ain't sipping that, you know, they're drinking straight from the bottle. They're doing shots and, and that's fine too. You know, that has its place right now. I am not the biggest fan of saying I'm not the biggest fan of like completely walking away from something. Um, I think avoidance can be a bit of an of an issue. Um, and, you know, so I, while I I support uh, dry January in theory, um, I, I think that a better method long term would be to say, you know what, learn how to have just one taste learn how to not, you know, drink till midnight, you know, that I think that's more of a long term play for for people as individuals. That being said, uh, the spirit of dry January, no pun intended, um, is in the right place. And I also know that the industry supports it uh, emphatically. It still comes down to the individual. And while there's a lot of people out there would like to have like uh, sanctions come down on alcohol, would like to place uh, municipality uh, blockades around uh, nightclubs or advertising of alcohol on billboards in certain districts, it still comes down to the individual uh, participation. If somebody wants a drink, it doesn't matter how much the government tries to stop them or the World Health Organization tries to stop them they're still going to have a drink. To me, the the ability to have a true um, health healthful lifestyle with alcohol involved is up here and with the individual. You know, it's up here. And so you got to know when too much is too much. And you also have to know when to take days off from tasting. Like here I am, I'm on I'm on probably day 5 of uh, of not tasting anything and that's it's great for me, you know, but it's also not something that I'm going to continue all month. You know, I, I have no intention of having a completely dry January. And the fact is the really the real reason why I I am uh, coming, you know, I'm taking so many days off. Was, let's face it. You know, if, if you watch this channel, if you follow me, you know, I just did my top 100. That's kind of like a Super Bowl, you know, for a taster. I had. Uh, in the span of a couple of days, you know, I had, you know, more than 300 tastes if you kind of combine like the going back and forth and thinking about it and talking about it. So, of course, I'm going to take a lengthy break. But I'm always reminded of I'm always reminded of what uh, Dave Broom wrote. Uh, Dave Broom wrote about this in, uh, in Whiskey Magazine several years ago. And Dave, of course, is an iconic whiskey writer. I consider him a friend. Um, he's just an, just a great writer. And, you know, you can find his works all over the place. But Dave, Dave talked about like, you know, there's all of these like teas out there to, to help your liver and everything. And he's like, if you are a bourbon fan or if you're a whiskey fan, just take a break. And that's really all you have to do. And that's all dry January is trying to convince people to do. Now, there's there's I know there's this trend of having so I think it's sober, sober November. Uh, and there's always a new wave of getting people to stop drinking and all the bourbon enthusiasts out there. I want you to like, consider this. 
that there are people who come home from the bar, they're stumbling into their home, and they cannot get up, and they fall asleep on the ground. Their kids walk in and see them that way. That's what a lot of this stuff is geared for. A lot of these efforts are geared to stop that. And, you know, alcoholism is a real problem. But you, as a taster, as someone who is an enthusiast in this community, you can teach people that you don't have to drink like that in order to enjoy alcohol. And that is all I have ever tried to teach people. Uh, so with that being said, there has been this incredible wave fully supported by the, by the distillation community with, with the hopes that you know this can help people not feel uncomfortable at a cocktail party and feel influenced like, hey, I got to have a cocktail. So I better have a cocktail glass and something that looks like a cocktail. Uh, and so there's been a lot of these uh, spiritless uh, products come out. And at first I was, I, I think they kind of bothered me because it, it went back into that. Um, I, I have a belief of, you know, don't avoid something. If you have an issue with it, I think you should work on the work on what brings you to that bottle to want to drink the whole thing. And, you know, but I, I also come from, you know, having put myself through the ringer and therapy after I came home from my rack. So I, I have a different mentality of what it's like to, you know, battle something. But the fact is so many people have issues with alcohol and there are a lot of uh, people who feel insecure at a party, especially around the holidays. And so I understand why there is a market for spiritless, spiritless products. So that being said, I am going to give my very first review. I believe I believe this is my first review, public review anyway. I know I've tasted them in uh, in competition, but this is my first review of a of a spiritless product. Now, if you want to know how this is made, I there there's a, a lot of interesting science behind this. But essentially, they start with like neutral grain spirit. Um, and they add, um, they add, you know, wood to it and then they reverse distill it out, out the alcohol. It's a pretty interesting process. I've got a link in my description to the website of the comp, this particular company, and you can learn a lot more about it. I, I wouldn't give it the justice it deserves. I've never seen it happen in person. And I'm one of those people where if I'm going to talk about something, I feel a lot more comfortable talking about it if I've seen it in person. And so this is actually the non-alcoholic uh, spiced whiskey. So this is um, this is essentially a cinnamon cinnamon whiskey. So this would be a replacement for Fireball, which you know, not the biggest fan of Fireball. So uh, here we go. Wow, you can definitely smell that cinnamon. Lots and lots of cinnamon. You know, one of the one of the comments on the bottle. This particular bottle, it says, like, you can use it in bourbon cocktails. I'm just smelling this, and I'm thinking, like, wow, this could be used as, like, a, as, as in some kind of uh, format for a cinnamon cocktail because it is, to me, it smells just, like, straight like cinnamon. I don't, I'm not picking up any wood. I'm not picking up any, like, alcoholy notes, which, obviously, there's no alcohol in it. I get a little hint of like a grain, uh, not any kind of like descript, you know, kind of a nondescript grain note. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's pretty tasty. Kind of reminds me of like uh, cinnamon tea. Like, um, like some kind of chai. This reminds me of like a like a chai tea, which chai is tea, uh, but this like a really cinnamon. This is very lovely. Yeah, I could definitely get on board with this. I mean, I'm not even forget about calling this stuff uh, non-alcoholic whiskey. Wow. If you like cinnamon, this is really tasty. Here, take a look at that. 
really tasty right there. Mm. I happen to like that a lot. I, I was going into it thinking that I wouldn't like it, but I think that is a very tasty. I can still feel the, the cinnamon on my palate. Um, it doesn't, you know, in terms of like, it does it have like any kind of whiskey feel to it. I think that this would be an un, this would be not the right one for me to compare to the category because I don't drink fireball or cinnamon flavored whiskey. But I have had it before and I tell you that I, I like I like this better than I like fireball, you know, which I, I think that's not gonna surprise anybody because I can't stand fireball. But one of the things about it is there's no like uh, to me like when you when you taste those those cinnamon flavored whiskeys it's like they don't they don't match they don't meld together you know it's not, they don't come together uh whereas this one there's no alcohol here to kind of like battle the cinnamon flavor and the cinnamon pops out really nice whether it's like a cinnamon toothpick uh, or it's a you know like a hot jolly rancher or something like that there's just a lot going on here that makes me say this is fantastic uh, you definitely want to to see what this is about. This is not just I, I don't think this is something that you would have to drink if if you want to avoid having a cocktail, but you want to still look like you have the presence of a cocktail. I think you could enjoy this by itself. And it really does remind me of some of those really spicy teas um, that I've had, especially when I was in the Middle East. But, hey, that's going to do it for uh, my little commentary on uh, Dry January um, and this review. Uh, wow, this is a long video. A uh, couple other things that I have coming up. I've got a big year coming up. Uh, I have an event series in Arizona during the week of the big game, which I can't say what that big game is. But if you Google it, you will find that uh, Phoenix, Arizona is hosting a very large football game. Uh, Feb the week of February 8th. Well, I am having an event uh, the February 9th and 10th. Link in the description about that if you want to go check those out. I will warn you, though, hotels that week are like $5,000 a night. So while my ticket prices may seem high on that, they ain't nowhere near uh, the hotel rates uh, that are going on in that town right now. Uh, I also have, I'm returning to Pittsburgh at Jurgles. You can find a link to that in the description as well. And, of course, the Legend Series returns at the Kentucky Derby Museum. This is my 10th year. Uh, this year we honor Kentucky Peerless, Rabbit Hole, and Michters. So make sure you go and check out those events if you want to, to if you're in, if in those respective areas. I hope to see you at one of them. And thank you for tuning in. If you are practicing dry January, put it in the comment section. I'd love to know uh, what you do for dry January. Once again, I support it. Uh, but remember, you know, you uh, you can go back and forth on, uh, you know, having alcohol and not having alcohol. But the best way to a healthy lifestyle, in my opinion, I'm not a doctor, is uh, is moderation and knowing when to only have one drink or none at all. But that's going to do it for this little video. Appreciate you tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Remember, vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers, y'all.